Hello, my name is Andrew Crawford. Uh, we farm here in Dansville, Michigan. I get to fill in for my dad here as he's on vacation. <laughs> These beans are a 1 8 maturity uh, planted at the end of April. Actually, looking really good, seeing how we have been a little bit behind on rainfall this summer. We have caught in just enough rain to keep them going, keep them looking good. Disease pressure wise, there's virtually none. Insect damage, very, very low. We were watching Japanese beetle earlier in the year and soybean aphids, but nothing ever got over the threshold, so we haven't had to come back in and spray anything on these beans. Um, they are currently at the R6 stage. Being a 1.8 bean, we are not far off of R7. Uh, we're generally in the R6 stage for about 20 days. We've been there on these beans for about two weeks. But I do think we proved last year that as long as we can keep getting some rains here in August and the first part of September, these beans are going to keep going and, you know, we still have a potential for a heck of a bean crop. These are all drilled seven and a half inch row beans. You know, looking at the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee's research, we felt that we were getting our beans on way too thick. You know, it was un not uncommon for us to be planting 180, 190,000 in drilled beans, and we're backed off clear to dropping 150,000. So we'll probably end up with a final stand uh, somewhere around 130, 135 on the drilled beans. And our yields have actually went up by doing this. We have also implemented rolling our beans, um, not only for the ease of harvest, but we are rolling them at the first trifoliate and we are getting a little bit more branching on those beans. There's a lot of farms across the state of Michigan that are looking at research that has been compiled, that has been funded by the checkoff program. Andrew mentioned planting populations and field rolling, and those two things are probably the most widely adopted across the state. There are things that uh, really look at the opportunity to save money when we lower seed cost and as Andrew mentioned there's an opportunity to increase yield in some places especially where we have productive soil we know that we can get away with lower plant populations and really do a good job so if we can lower cost and increase yield that's a win-win. And another one that we have implemented is, is we're, we're tending to stay right out of our beans now once, once they've been sprayed with herbicide as long as we don't have to come back in and spray for insects, we're going to stay out of them. In the past, we have sprayed fungicide and foliar feeds on our beans, and we have never been able to see them pay on our farm. There are places for fungicides. I'm not saying you shouldn't go spray it, but you know, when you got a healthy looking field of beans like this, I stay right out of them. The Soybean Promotion Committee also did some research on fertilizer on beans, and what I took from that is if you absolutely feel like you need to go apply something to those beans, go put a little bit more potassium out there in the spring and you'll, you'll get your money back on that. 